Africans of Reddit. What are the greatest misconceptions people have about your native country? 95% of Moroccans, Algerians, Tunisians do not live in the desert. We live and have always lived in the extreme north. Plus, most people here have never been to the desert before. It always baffles people when I tell them this. Edit an additional fun fact. At least a third in Morocco and a quarter in Algeria do not speak Arabic as their first language. They speak Berber and identify as such which is the native language of North Africa except most of Egypt with around 20 million speakers worldwide. I moved to Kenya when I was in 4th grade and moved to the US in the 8th grade. People were shocked I knew what a pizza was. I was also asked if I lived in a hut on a tree. It was a very genuine question and the middle school I went to was one of the top public schools in the Maryland. I like that they assumed the hut had to be in a tree. But then I thought like a middle schooler and I was like lions. Duh. I heard this story from a Kenyan friend of mine and her American husband. Lots of Christian mission groups want to go visit Kenya to help convert the masses. And one of their go-to tactics is to bring some sort of American food as a gift to help win over their hearts. A very popular gift item is peanut butter. They are surprised to find out that peanut butter is stocked in all the grocery stores. Just like it is in the USA. South African here. The first time I traveled to America. LA to be exact. One of the first questions I was asked was if I had ever had pizza before. I mean. South Africa performed the first successful heart transplant. We've had the nuclear bomb. And yes, we have had a chain of pizza huts among other brands for decades. That if one group has a tradition you can also sub an accent, dress, etc. That all of Africa does it. Edit typo. Nigeria. Too many to address at once. So I'll just address one. Boko Haram is a very new thing. Nigeria is divided by tribe and by religion. The majority of the Christians are in the south. And the majority of the Muslims are in the north. There are disagreements. Intolerance and clashes from time to time. But for the most part everybody just handles their business. Boko Haram came about in 2002. Prior to that. As someone that spent 20 years in Nigeria growing up. Hearing about bombings and terrorist attacks propelled by Islamic extremists was something we watched on the news happening in other countries. When I tell people my family is still in Nigeria, the first thing they ask me is if they are safe and if they have to hide from Boko Haram. Boko Haram has strongholds in the north, especially in Borno state. That is so far from the major hub of Nigeria Lagos that it's like asking someone in Florida if they are concerned about what's going on in Montana. People in Nigeria are working, going to school, going to movies, having birthday parties, going to the beach, getting married, turning up on Snapchat, posting on Instagram, getting pedicures, doing normal human things. But the single story picture of Nigeria that makes the US news regularly is Boko Haram. I've had people try to correct me, telling me that no, I'm not from Ghana, West Africa, but that I'm from Guyana, South America. Oh okay thanks but I always get my homeland mixed up. Guyanese here. We feel your pain. You don't look African. Also, we get our mail sent to you by mistake sometimes. So it ends up 4 months late. Sudan here. We don't hunt for our food. We go to the mall and supermarkets. I know it sounds stupid. But you would be surprised to hear how many people believe that that Nigerians are all internet scammers. My GF is from Zimbabwe and she has to constantly remind people that she's not African American. She's just African. Oh my gosh. This reminds me of a conversation I had with my academic advisor I'm studying in South Korea and initially wanted to write my thesis on the Korean language abilities of African immigrant children in Korea who are attending Korean schools. When I presented my idea to my academic advisor this is the conversation we had. Advisor African Americans don't send their children to Korean schools. Me not African Americans. Africans. Advisor African American children go to international schools. Me again. Not African American. Just African. African children who are the children of African immigrants in. 
career. Advisor African American immigrants usually send their children to international or foreign schools. Me repressed sigh yes, I know. But I'm not talking about American children. I'm talking about African children. From the continent of Africa, not America. Advisor but, how? You said African American. Me um, no, I didn't. I mean African. Like from Kenya, or Nigeria, or Cote d'Ivoire. There are immigrants from the continent of Africa living in South Korea. Even after I got her to understand what I meant. She was convinced that there were no people from Africa living in Korea. Thought all the black people here were African American I keep having to stop her calling me that. Because I'm Canadian. So it annoys me a bit to constantly be called American. I'm just black. Thanks. I had to do a mini pre-research survey to show her that. Yes. There are plenty of Africans in Korea. Enough for a study anyway. My thesis has changed a bit since that initial conversation. But well. It was a memorable conversation. I live in Nairobi, Kenya and when I recently went back to Europe to meet up with friends they all asked me questions like what does it feel like to live without wifi? Or how do you even get to school? Which are the stupidest questions people have to understand that it isn't totally different and that a lot of things are the same. Peace. They also didn't believe me when I told them there's KFC here. I'm not from South Africa, but I grew up here. People seem to think everyone is African black. They are surprised to see someone like me Asian. Or when I mention it to other people out of Africa when I socialize. It's so diverse here. There's a bit of everything. Plus. Everyone speaks English. And there are 11 official languages in South Africa. I can speak to English and Afrikaans and I can understand around 4 English, Afrikaans, Sutu and Zulu. Edit I can also speak my mother tongue language which is Thai. It is kind of compulsory to learn local official languages because when you have a job interacting with people, they want someone who can speak as many of the official languages as possible for the convenience of the customer. Other than that, English is the middle ground. I'm from Kenya. People are surprised I speak fluent English. When I tell them it's in fact a language I've spoken all my life besides Swahili. You can see the look of surprise on their faces. I learned from a Nigerian classmate that most Africans especially younger ones speak semi-fluent English or French. Not necessarily to better travel and study abroad, but also because there are often so many local languages that it's necessary to use it as an intermediary language so that you can communicate with people just a city over. Kinda shocked me at first, but then half a second later I was like oh yeah that makes perfect sense. To start, 90% of the people I come across never heard of my country before. I'm from Burkina Faso, and I live in the US. That makes things already difficult. I therefore actively avoid answering the where are you from question. Because, when I answer, people are very often baffled. I then have to go through my well practiced spiel of don't feel bad. It's a tiny country, and we share a border with Ghana heard of Ghana. For the conversation to carry on to easier topics, the ones that know about Burkina rarely have misconceptions they know it's not a rich country. But for them to know about our existence, they usually have to be pretty familiar with Africa to start with. On the other hand, I have legit had to answer all the questions below. Are there zebras running around? Do you still live in huts? How did you travel here? Do you guys have war? Answers are no. No. I took a plane. No. I fall in the category of knows it's an African country, but I'd need 2 minutes on Wikipedia before I can ask relevant questions. When my sister moved from Zimbabwe to the UK, people thought she was rich or royalty when she spoke about having servants. People in other countries don't realize that a lot of people in the southern parts of Africa have maids and gardeners. When I lived in Tanzania I had two housekeepers. People got so offended and some straight up accused me of exploiting the locals. My housekeepers had housekeepers and their housekeepers had housekeepers. It's housekeepers all the way down. It would have been really weird for me not to have housekeepers. Egyptian here. So few people realize that the pyramids are quite literally in the middle of the city. Everyone just assumes it's just somewhere in the middle of the desert. 
Going inside the middle one made me massively claustrophobic as we had to walk bent double all the way to the middle with hundreds of people crushed in doing the same. Great experience never ducking doing it again. You can geo inside them. Monday morning edit yes I'm aware they have chambers and entrances I had no idea you were allowed in them. If you mean South Africa. I'd like to point out that Nandis came from there. Cheeky. I'm still convinced that this is some kind of conspiracy because no one will explain what cheeky Nandis are in a language that makes sense. The cheeky means an unplanned treat thing. Like if you were in England someone might invite you for a cheeky pint after work. Nandis is a casual restaurant that was hugely popular a few years ago. It's still pretty popular, but not to the same extremes I don't think. Their thing is marinated chicken with a variety of different piri piri sauces on the side. So a cheeky Nandus is you know, when you go downtown with the lads, and you all realize you're Hank Marvin, so you say lads let's go maxes, but your mates me the A, K, A. The Bantasaurus Rex has some Miller left on his Nandus gift card and he's like mate let's a have a cheeky Nandus on me, and you go smithy my son you're an absolute ledge so you go, have an extra cheeky Nandus with a side order of top quality banter. Or like when you're absolutely hanging from the night, before after drinking 60 WKD blue, because they were on special, and then you wake up on your mate's kitchen floor at 1pm cuddling a teapot with a proper gammy mouth and the only thing that is gonna fix it, and your fuzzy head is a cheeky Nandus chicken wing roulette plate with extra cheeky fizzy drink, after ordering tap water. Makes sense now. You see my nation's greatest embarrassment were going from being a functioning country to a state of anarchy. Having no government for a decade. Bombs going off in the capital due to a terrorist group. And playing real life clash of clans. And ducking getting taken over by Italy, even if it was for a short time. Welcome to Somalia the eastern shithole of Africa. From an Egyptian friend Arabic language is not all the same. There are many different dialects. I came to think of when I introduced an Egyptian friend to a Raj song can't remember if it was Taha or Kaled. And he went this is not Arabic. Oh. Okay. It's Algerian. They are not all black. If you're from Africa. Why are you white? You can't just ask people why they are white. Someone asked me if I ever saw snow. I said no. Then they asked if I ever saw rain. Lord. I bless the rains down in Africa. That Rwanda is still at war, even though the war ended 24 years ago, and Rwanda is now one of the most peaceful and stable countries in Africa. I'm from Kenya, but I've spent a significant amount of time in Rwanda in the last one year and I have to ask just how durable and genuine is the peace and stability there. I could always hear whispers with quite a number of people telling me it's quite fragile. I've lived here since 1996, and I feel it is durable. The answer would probably be too long for this thread, but long story short the conditions that led to the war and genocide are not present in my opinion, and would require a very long time to build up. Moroccan here and people from Europe still think that we ride camels and live in the desert. We have a fiber optics, 4G, Netflix, Imux and camels of course. Camels are cool though. Tunisian here. No. We are not the terrorist country of Africa and never were. In fact. The population is quite liberal, and aside some parts in the middle and the west country. People live more like Europeans rather than Arabs. Heck. We're in the top 10 biggest drinkers on earth. Passed out revolutionary women protection laws last year for which many Middle Eastern countries are still giving us shit and have a gay supporting radio broadcasting to all, and slowly changing things around. Sadly, this resulted in the extremist parts of the population to leave to spread terror elsewhere post-revolution. Sadly, we also have massive economic crisis. Politics are trying to learn democracy on the fly and sadly not fast enough to be efficient enough. And we have massive identity crisis. We can't really define ourselves as Africans, Mediterraneans or Arabs and as a result, feel like black sheep and almost all youth wants to emigrate. Edit sweet merciful Arceus this blow up overnight, and a day of work, answers time. But in short, so you wouldn't have to scroll through all the comments chain. 1 Tunisia didn't embrace its Phoenician heritage Elissa and Hannibal until rather recently. The reasons 
as far as me and some anthropology studying friends know, are that Islam had a massive impact here. That the old tribes around Tunisia and Algeria lead by a woman you should check out. The Kahina link resorted to destroying everything in a desperate gamble to win. And that the old regime used way too many ruins as ATMs. 2. Why Tunisians have an identity crisis. Simple areas we'd like to identify with don't accept us. Africa doesn't because of sad old remnants of racism and massive football motivated feuds no. Really. Mediterranean European countries don't accept us because we are too Arabic and because of the issues immigration brings. Middle Eastern countries hate us because we are too Europeans. Being party animals. Absurdly heavy drinkers. And having a quite free sex life in fact. Out of all my friends. I can count the virgins on one hand. Me included. Patriotism did wake up a moment post revolution. But the situation of the country and stupid decisions of both old and new government dash the youth's pride in the country. We are in peace. But barely. Many of the bad parts of the old regime are still here. And a massive economic crisis is raging on. I'm an active part in the local Jeek community and a massive chunk of us don't identify as Tunisians. But as Jeeks. It's that deep. People seem to think black Zimbabweans willingly voted to suffer the way we did. There was a lot of intimidation and fear that kept ZANU PF and Mugabe in power. Rigging is so common in our elections that it's rumored that at the last election that Mugabe won was in 1990. It wasn't just white Zimbabweans who suffered under the Mugabe regime. It was everyone who wasn't part of or a beneficiary of the political elite. Kenyan. Living in Sweden. One mud hurts. No. Not everyone lives in one. I don't know anyone who lives in them. Two tigers. Lions and wild animals everywhere. I do remember that there were more wild animals around when we were younger. But even then I never saw an elephant or some of the big five when going to school. Tigers aren't even native to Africa. Three for some reason. A lot of people seem to think that we fled to Europe because of war. No. We actually have more money in Africa than we do in Europe. For the official language is Swahili. Kenyan doesn't exist 